So get your head in like that. Get your feet in, extend them forward. <laughs> this is like the favorite moment, that moment when you just lay down and it's you're just kind of hugged. So I like to always start here, not only because it's relaxing, but it gives us a chance to just reset. No matter how the week has gone, the chance just to be fresh. So take a couple of good deep breaths. Just inhale, very full, all the way to belly. Good, nice exhale. And keep on taking slow, deep breaths like that. We'll start off with connecting with an intention for class today. So just relax and breathe for the next minute or so. So the intention I was thinking about is how easy it is. Oftentimes it's easier to be harsh than to be loving. And that's especially true when it comes to how we communicate with our own body, with our own selves. But imagine that whatever message you gave yourselves, that's what they turn into your story of reality. So for instance, if you're just constantly telling the story that, oh, I'm just tight, I'm inflexible, I'm weak, and you just keep on telling yourselves that story over and over again, all they know to do is continue to live that story because that's the story that, that you're, the powerful manifester is, is allowing to take place. So imagine if, what if we can reset our story by first focusing on our thoughts and especially switching toward loving and kind thoughts. Imagine how your cells can readjust if that's the case. So for instance, if we always say that we're inflexible, then the body just holds on to that. But if instead in the stretches, we're visualizing ourselves being more mobile, more flexible, more loose. Imagine perhaps the cells take that story and they try to make that become the new reality. So just kind of envision yourself today as the author of the story rather than the person just kind of living in it. So that's the image that will carry us forward, especially when we're doing stretches, just visualize the, the muscles longer. When we're doing strengthening things, visualize it stronger. So overall, we're helping to improve wellness, improve health, improve vitality. So with that idea, let's take some nice initial stretches to begin. The arm stretch all the way to the back wall. Start to wiggle your shoulders and your arms to the right. And then wiggle over to the left. The stretch the side ribs, the shoulders. I'll usually synchronize the breath and exhale to lean and inhale to go back to the straight long spot. Imagine this creating more space so that the breath can go deeper. Like the muscle layer and even the rib cage, the bones are trying to open up to the best, most open alignment. So take one more to each side. back to the nice straight line, right knee comes into chest, hug around that knee. As we're trying to pull the knee in really tight, it's also nice to take a couple of nice ankle rolls, just loosen up the tight. Yeah, get all the snap freckles popped out. Okay, and right leg extends directly up to sky, grab on. Let that leg extend up. This is one of those where if the story has always been tight hamstrings, it's hard to get past that. But just breathe, relax. Even if it's just in the imagination, imagine what it would be like to have long hamstrings like that. Couple more breaths right there. Nice inhale. 
Good. Exhale, hook the heel to back left. So it's like a pigeon pose. If you're confused, you can keep around at others. Once you've got the heel hook to the back left into the fabric, slide the shin in until you feel the hip open. Let the muscles relax around that opening for a couple of breaths. Sometimes to start off slow, gradually gaining momentum. Here, take another huge inhale, a nice exhale, free out this leg. I'll usually extend it up to sky one more time, a little bonus stretch, and then drop it all the way down. Second side, left knee into the chest, you're gonna keep hug, a couple of ankle rolls. With us already having done one half, notice if that right half that's relaxing down, notice if things just feel different. That's the magic of yoga, is it just feels good. Hard to explain exactly what it is, but it's like I just feel more alive in that leg. Okay, let's start to extend this leg up to sky, moving into the hamstring. Nice thoughts to this leg rather than judgment. Thank you so much for carrying me through my days. I'm so excited to grow even longer with you. Sometimes it's like the stretches are metaphors. Like long legs help us to kind of leap across the ocean toward amazing new goals. It's a huge inhale. Exhale. Put this left foot to the back right, slide the shin in, hip opener again. this leg, put extension up to sky, and then we drop it down. So stretching the arms to the back wall, your left hand grabs the right so that it helps you to face your whole torso toward the front door where we came in. So left hip is stacked on the right hip. We're in a side leg position. Okay, from that, that long, direction, the long angle of the whole body. We're going to curl into a tight ball, eagle position, and then extend back out straight and arch back a little bit. If you're on the front row, kind of watch that you're trying not to bump feet <laughs> and curl in. Do it maybe two more times, arch back, go in, almost like an exaggerated cat cow, helping everything wake up in the spine just a little bit. Good, so after this next one, when you're back to long, grab onto the top fabric, grab up high, we're shifting hips around, so now right on top, we're facing the back door. Okay, two or three good times, curl in, straighten out to arch back. Good. I'm waking up. And then after this next one, return back to the nice 
straight line. Return to laying the hips like you were a moment ago, normal. And then take the feet free off the front, grab up high, we're sitting up. Okay, so we'll take a little back bend. The hands grip up high on the back end. We start to slide the fabric through the hands and then eventually gaze back. So keeping the grip on the fabric makes it easy. If you ever feel like the spine wants more and you're okay to continue to let go of your hands, that is an option. You can perhaps grab for the feet. Just take two more breaths. And grab the fabric slowly, let the head rise back up. Floating child for a moment. The elbows lean forward, a couple of breaths there. Feel how nice this is on the spine to get that counter stretch. Beautiful, so sitting back up, bring the hands to the inside. Clasp around right foot or even right ankle if you need to. Mm -hmm. Extend the right leg upward. Moving into that hamstring again. Once again, have a kind thought to the hamstring rather than harshness. Start to shift the, gift, the grip to free out the right hand. So the left hand is either going to grab the outside of the foot or the outside of the ankle area. The right hand releases, it circles up to the sky and it moves to the stretch the back wall for a twist. Good, return the right arm forward and then release the right leg. Grab onto left, extend it upward. onto ankle or calf is absolutely fine. Whatever helps you to feel stretch. Okay, shift the grip. So right hand is the one holding the leg up. Left hand circles all the way back to the twist. Huge breath in, out, good, release, return forward, bring the arms back behind the fabric, hook the thumbs in, this helps to push the fabric down, we're bringing it to about pant line, like belt line, and then lean halfway back to lock it in, in place on that spot, the hands are still gripping high, Open the legs wide, and then as you tilt backwards, the wide legs make sure that you won't fall out. So then just wrap around the fabric, hands release. Let yourself hang. You You'll want to wrap the ankles all the way around. Yeah, wrap your ankles, that's it, and then you're safe. So I'll just note here, my rule with inversions is you do not have to stay as long as anybody else. You're just going for the amount of time that feels good for your body. So if you get to the point where your head is telling you, I need to flip back up, just grab back onto the fabric and slowly rise. But that being said, I'll give you some time here. So a lot of people come to let the spine just hang. It feels amazing. After so much compression that our spine gets out. Yeah, if you ever need to come up just to readjust where the fabric's hitting, that's also fine, nothing wrong with that. Personally, I like to just take long, slow breaths when I'm Basically, any any organ system in the body receives benefits from inversion. 
just enjoying all these benefits we're giving our body right now. rush to come out but if you are out we're here it's a good opportunity to move through some neck stretches so just slowly roll the head over to the shoulder and bring the center to the other side if you discover areas where there is extra neck tightness this is just a beautiful opportunity to just pause and breathe through that tightness. Give it a chance to stretch out. So upside down, give it the last couple of breaths. Maybe three or four more breaths, and then you'll head up to a seated. Sitting, let's take a twist even deeper than before. Bunch up the whole fabric to face our torso toward front. And then the, um, the, let's see, the left hand stays in front of your face. The right arm either stretches to that back wall or circles around the fabric behind you. Whatever feels better. Yeah, right? I heard that noise. <laughs> like, I love twisting because it's that's the, the sensation we get. Deep inhale, exhale. Beautiful, let's start to switch sides, so release. Bunch it back up to back arm. This time it's the left arm that circles back or around the back side of head. Switch your arms. That's it. Yep, you got it. Okay, one more deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Face forward. Get a hold of each end of the fabric. We'll tilt the legs up and then forward to exit. Uh, and let's just take fabric all the way in front of us. Gripping a little wider than shoulders. We're standing directly under plumb line. And then lean directly forward. Nice and flatten the low back. So it's like you're, you imagine if you had a little tail, you're trying to point that tail even further back. Sway the arms all the way to the front door. Let's stay. Right elbow bends to point the front foot down. Two straight arms sway forward, all the way to back door, stay. Left elbow points down. And we turn forward, flatten the spine again. We're shifting the left foot to be the one directly under our body weight so that right leg can spin directly back or your Bend the knee so the foot is above the knee. And then we're going to pump that foot up and down, strengthening the glute. So it's going to be pumping up 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 
five, four, three, two, one. Take the knee to the nose, curl again. Extend directly back out, warrior three. We're gonna shift to half moon, so the left hand bumps down to the center of the loop. Right hand bumps up at the same time the hip stacks. Half moon pose. That's it. See if the foot can lift even higher. Good. Keep the same grip, but the right foot is gonna step next to the left foot. The shoulders, rather than being open to the side, we're kind of rotating the right shoulder in a socket, so the front of the, the bone is pointing down. It gets a nice shoulder stretch, just kind of twisting it backwards. And unwind that shoulder. Return back to the even shoulder grip. And just a flat spine. So now readjust the stance. The right foot is going to be right in the center, holding us up. Left foot swings back. Bend the knee. Foot is above. Coming up and down. Here's 25. 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, curl me to the nose, round in. Kick directly back out flat. Right hand center of loop. And then left hand and hip rise up to step together. Foot tries to lift high. Good. One more inhale. Exhale, keep the grip. As the foot starts to drop down, rotate the left shoulder down to get that little shoulder stretch. Unwind the arm. Another moment, just returning flat. Slight bend of the knees, round the spine up. We're standing. Now lock the arms straight and also make your body rigid so you're straight from, from the, um, the heels all the way up to the shoulders. It's like a plank position. From here, we're rolling forward and then arm strength pushes into the fabric to return us back. Good. Exhale. Inhale. Good. Take another five. Four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Take the right ankle inside the fabric. Step up nice and high. And starting to move into that stretch, we're sinking the weight forward. However much flexibility it has right at this point. Weight comes back over standing leg. We're hopping forward, so we're slightly in front of plumb line. And then our hand is switching, right hand onto the left side. We're gonna slowly let the leg rotate through the side. There'll be a moment where the femur needs to rotate in its socket for the leg to come all the way behind us. Once it's there, readjust. So one hand on each side, it's a low X cross. And so we're trying to keep the grip high for a moment and then sinking back to kind of like a backwards split. It is a deep back bend as well, that low back. Good, weight back over the standing leg, bend of the knee. Slide the hands closer to shoulders. 
So just leaning back, your weight rests backwards, and this is a nice quad stretch for that right thigh. If you need a little bit more, let the knee pull back even further. Back forward, dancer's pose. So this one is a close grip to the shoulders. The elbows are engaged, um, so shoulders are engaged. Elbows point forward. Lean the torso forward, but then kick the foot into the fabric because that's what creates the lift. Yeah. Release. The right hand switches back to where it was on the left. Try to extend the leg as straight as it can back, and then it's going to swing through the side. Rotate the femur in its socket back up, forward. And then we're going to switch legs. So you can just step this foot out, step the other one in, or the swinging switch is grip up high, keep both legs straight, just step the left foot in and the right foot out. Good. If fabric slid up the leg, push it back down to ankle. Yeah, nothing wrong with just stepping out. Sometimes it just isn't working. <laughs> Good. So we're standing just slightly behind the line, grip up high, splits forward. So this one's a good one to know. If for, for some reason your angle is going off to a weird direction, readjust where your standing foot is. That'll be what changes it. Good. We're not locking our front knee, but we are trying to find as much extension as we can without locking. The reason why I like to have the grip high is because if for some reason we lose our balance, if the grip is high, we can catch it really easily. If it's low, we catch ourselves a lot lower. So this is just a, a lot more safe. Another breath or two. Slow and deep. Just visualize yourself and be kind to yourself. So visualize the long legs and be kind about it. Everybody has a deeper possibility, but it's not a forceful heading there. It's just gradual, kind, loving our body, helping it feel good. good. So the weight's back over the standing leg. Hop just a little bit in front of the line. We're gripping onto this right half. Swing the leg around. Try to keep it as straight as it will, being behind. Reset the grip. We've got one on each side. Good. And start to take almost like a splits backwards. Beautiful. So um, the leg that's in the fabric bends. Slide the hands closer to the shoulders. And then just relax the weight backward. The quad stretch, so let the knee pull backward even further if you need more of the quad stretch. This one's very little balancing effort. We're just kind of relaxing the hips and the shoulders, resting in the Good. Good. Yeah, you notice how this feels, builds grip strength, just kind of holding on for an extended time. Okay, so standing back on the right foot. We're gripping close to shoulder, pointing the elbows forward, lean forward, and then kick the foot into the fabric to create lift. Inhale, exhale, rising up. Switching grip to just this right half. Extend the leg as much as it can. Swing through the side, pull the femur, rotate back up. Good. If you want just another moment to practice the swinging switch, you can again, but we will end up just standing. So both feet out. Yeah, see? That's why we practice. Just give that extra bonus. Okay, so hip hang the fabric. Um, we grab onto it, pull it in to the hip bones. We don't want it to slide up to guts because that's uncomfortable. So in the hip bones, even tippy toes if you need to. Tiptoe forward to take all the slack out of the fabric. Lean forward. 
and then start to drop the hands to the floor. Three or four big steps back brings our hips back under plumb line. If you can already feel it, that the massage on the hips is intense, you can just stay in down, downward facing dog, even lifting the, the weight almost off the fabric. You guys can hide. You'll also have the option for hip hang if you'd like. Bending both knees, the toes lift up, and hug around the shins. Good. Always know you can come up if your head needs to not be upside down. That's always fine. If you know that your spine just wants to be in the hip hang like this, that's fine. I'll also guide us through a standing split for anybody who wants to take that. So from the downward facing dog, you're gonna kick your leg, your right leg wide. This reminds us to catch the right foot on the outside of the right fabric. So bending the knee, cut, wrap around the outside of right. Good, and then return left toes back to floor if they lifted. Try to slide the right toes up as high as they can. Good, and if there's more flexibility, you hop the standing foot closer and or walk the hands closer to the foot. As close to that standing slit as possible. Just feel everything helping you to lengthen up. <laughs> Maybe slide the right one just a little closer in the middle. Okay. We'll start to return, so right knee bends. If the left foot hopped uh, forward, hop it back, and then gentle release. Good. Left kicks wide to remind us to wrap outside. Once it's wrapped, right toes return to floor. Left leg extends up. You don't have to hop any further forward, but if you need more, that's a way to get more. Yeah, try to wrap around outside instead of that's it. Yep, you got it. Okay. Yep. That's just a little safer so you won't accidentally kick your leg out. <laughs> I think it's just a tad too high. That's okay. Yep. You'll know for next time. Just bump it a little lower. Okay. We'll slowly return. So both feet come back to the down dog shape. Those that want to be in, in the hip hinge just a little longer, you can rest. Those that need to be back up, you'll slowly work your feet forward until the heels are flat on the ground. Gradually roll your head up nice and slow. And then as soon as you're up, you're gonna take the fabric behind your back so you can just lean back. But no pressure, those that wanna hang for a little while. Looks like I think we're all heading up, so great. So I like to just have hands behind the head for a little while. One of my favorite things to do here is bend the right knee and the right elbow comes closer to the right knee. And then switch it out. So if you're close to people, just watch out for neighbors. <laughs> so we're giving our head plenty of time. Just keep on enjoying this for a moment. listening for your body during this recovery time. If there's any dizziness, nausea, things like that, that's a sign to just stay or even sit down if you need to. If you're doing good and you get to that point where you're like, I could move on, I'm good, um, then you'll come up to stand on your own and flip fabric back out in front. Good. So let's add in a few more stretches. So right ankle comes inside. With this one, you can do the, the split that we did before, hands up high, sink weight forward. You can also just slide the hands down and bring the torso closer to the leg. So it's up to you. Neither one's necessarily better or worse. It just depends on what's going to help your hamstrings to grow even longer at this moment.
a weight over the center. We're taking a twist. The left hand grabs on right shin or pushes along the outside of right. But this one's the harder balance version. Right arm opens up behind. this right shoulder just a little bit. Trace it like a rainbow back up to go forward next to the other hand and then up to go back. Just a couple of times moving through that shoulder. One more time. Forward and back. Beautiful. And release. We're going to change our standing toes to point to the back door. We're gripping just on the little left half, left hand slides up, right hand slides down. Start to sink more weight forward to mirror if you want more stretch through the legs. Like that half. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Over the standing leg, bump the fabric to the knee. We're going to transition to warrior two. So already open the arms on the inside like a warrior two. You're pressing your tricep into the fabric behind you and just start to sink the legs forward to a deep warrior two lunge. Keep the tailbone tucked just a little bit. That helps to zip up the core as well. Extended side angle, the right elbow rests on the right side, the left hand up and overhead towards the mirror. If you want to go even deeper, you can slip down to shoulder being close to me. The top hand grabs on the fabric to help lift the spine. Weight back over the standing leg. This is going to be tree pose. So the right foot comes to the thigh. We've got this assist. So hands to the heart. Feel how easy the balance is with that help under the thigh. Sometimes I take a screenshot mentally of the room in front of me. And then I close my eyes and try to hold that screenshot. Trying to play with crazy balance with eyes closed. Work, start to open the eyes. We're gonna head inside from here. So what we're gonna do is kind of already start to open up the fabric and then we're stepping into kind of like a wedgie slit thing right here in the middle. <laughs> and then you'll get the fabric behind you and also open it out. Find more or less the center and then sit inside. Slide the fabric down to the thighs. Awesome. So from here, once we're sitting, we're going to take the, um, the right ankle up onto the fabric in front of us. I love this for the hip stretch we get. So right ankle on the fabric in front. If you want more hip stretch, you're leaning forward, even hugging around that shin. Pull it in close. If it's intense and you need less, push your arm straight to help lessen the intensity on it. So closer is deeper, further is easier. into a stretch for this right leg. So the arch of the foot comes up onto the other fabric in front of us. And then slide that foot as high as you can get the hamstring to stretch. Same thing as before, locking the arm straight makes it much less intense on that hamstring. If you want it to get a little deeper, loosening that grip pulls the leg closer and closer.
Okay, free out the right leg to the mirror side. Left shin comes up on the fabric in front of us. Same option, hugging to fold it in, makes it deeper. Locking arm straight makes it easier. in front of you, bunch it up. Place the arch of the foot on that other fabric. Start to slide the left foot high. Exhale. This left foot is going to free its weight to the mirror side, so we can face forward. Beautiful. We'll do a little bonus stretch before we head back to standing for the second side. So with this one, take the heels back in the fabric in front of you. Is your heel slide close to the glute? Let your knees go wide. And then inch your elbows past the front end of the fabric. Your shoulders are kind of blocking forward. Good. Chin to chest. Perhaps clasp hands. And then take the hands behind the back of the head. This just curls us into a nice tight spot to stretch the upper back and the neck. Shoulders back in, feet all the way forward again. Grab onto each side. Slide the hands close to shoulders. Either exit like before, just swing up and then go forward or flip backwards up to go all the way back, tight grip the whole time. <laughs> Good catch. <laughs> you got it. Okay, so fabric um, like a backpack in front of the shoulders and then lift her on your back. From this, do a huge hug around the, the head and then two wraps. The second wrap, the fabric falls into your hands. Grip tight. Keep the feet where they are. Lean the hips back so it's like a pulling your spine nice and long. And we'll start to circle the hips around the world. Go left, the right, forward, left, back. Maybe two more times on this direction before we give our hands a little break. It's pretty tight on those hands. Good. Go for the second side. Just wiggle the fingers for a moment. two or three, come back up, out the hands, fabric all the way in front. Left ankle in. Options, maybe lean forward or maybe slide hands up to go slip again. Can you give yourself two or three good compliments? Sometimes even just I woke up and came. That's that's a compliment. <laughs> Sometimes that's a difficulty. We 
weight back over standing leg, raise torso up. We're gripping right hand on left or pushing on the outside. The left hand reaches back, nice spinal twist. Remember to stack the spine up as we're rotating around that nice tall spine. Moving through the shoulder, circle like a, a half circle rainbow to trace forward and then trace the fingers back again. A couple of times like that. Yeah, this can challenge the balance. If you need to grip fabric, that's okay. Good. Last one. And when we're facing back forward, grab on the right half, kind of stand close to the right. And we're gonna um, still gripping on the right half, the right hand slides up, the left hand slides down. Take some weight forward. Doesn't have to be much weight. comes back, bend the knee, fabric comes to the thigh, open the arms, rest the left tricep on the fabric behind it, and then start to sink the weight forward, warrior two. Bend it side angle, left elbow rests on the left thigh, right arm up and over, but always slip down to the left shoulder close to the knee. And grab some fabric to rise. And playing with the tree pose, left foot to thigh. Stack the spine, maybe hands to heart. Maybe just working on balance here. Or take a snapshot of the room and then as you close your eyes, try to hold on to that mental picture. Okay, open the eyes. We're stepping into the fabric again, finding ourselves dividing the fabric so we can sit in the middle. Notice how the way you sit impacts if you're gonna be swinging or not. So just know if you're getting nauseous or whatever, just go slow and gentle instead. Okay, so this time we're taking both feet up onto the fabric in front of us. So one hand is like a stop sign and it pushes into the fabric in front of your face. That helps it find the center. The opposite foot comes up where the hand is. And then once you've got one foot up, you get the next foot, right next to the first. Both legs will first extend upward, trying to go to almost like a taco fold. If you're rocking like crazy and you don't like it, you can kind of manipulate it by taking the heels into the fabric for a little bit. That'll help it ease a little bit or sometimes kind of widening out the fabric and pushing your shoulders back. Sometimes that'll get it. But there are a couple of things you can do just to help. What I try to do here if I'm wanting to go deeper is mentally scan through the areas that are resisting it the most, even maybe contracting to try to resist it. And then try to send the thought of relaxation to that area. As it relaxes, the likely pulls it inward even deeper. Take a moment with cobbler. So bottoms of both feet come together, the knees are open, slide the hill, pull this.
we'll be heading to a Shavasana from here. As long as you're okay with still being in the fabric, then we'll head to Shavasana by extending both legs toward the mirror side and then sliding the back backwards so that you can just rest. If anybody by this point needs to not be in the fabric, that's always fine. You can drop down to the floor instead. Also know if there's any last poses or stretches, anything you need before you're, you're ready to settle into Shavasana, that's always fine as well. But eventually settling into that calm, restful state. We spend the last few minutes of every class here just because this is a chance for us to calm everything down, relax, integrate all the benefits of our practice. Just breathe.
Into deep in the inhales. And the exhales. As we're starting to stretch out the body in ways that feel good, imagine you're also writing yourself a little love note to your body. Maybe you stretch the arms to the back wall and let the shoulders wiggle right and left. Thank you, body, so much for all you do. I love you. I'm listening. Maybe roll onto one hip and curl in, arch back a couple of times each side. What are the natural gratitude thoughts that are popping up? How would you like to talk to yourselves today? We're gonna rush it all, take time to balance out the spine, both sides. Eventually, when things feel good and balanced, we'll work our way up to a comfortable seated place, but no rush to get there. Eventually, when we're up, we'll take hands together in front of hearts. We'll start to reconnect with our intention. There's so much harshness in the world, and it all really starts with our thoughts. So what if we start off being kinder, more compassionate to ourselves? Sometimes that's harder to do than to be kind and compassionate to people external to us. So it all starts within, giving ourselves love, appreciating ourselves, loving this body for all it does for us all the time. And so with this type of gratitude and love to lead us on, let's wrap up the time we shared together with the sound of OM, deep in hell now. Namaste. Mm -hmm.